the Lord is good. And all the time, happy feast to all of you, the parishioners of St. Joseph. Things are not yet normal, and so that's why we have still the mask on our faces. And we hope that one day God will tear out this mask from up, from the upper part of it to down, so that we may be able to breathe well, because he is the God, the master of all everything. He is the God, the healing God. And when we celebrate this feast, the solemnity of St. Joseph, we are reminded that St. Joseph was a descendant of David. As a descendant of David, he belongs to the line of God, of David, to whom God promised a descendant, a king who will come and reign forever and ever. And so Joseph, the husband of Mary, was to fulfill this revelation by being a guardian to our Lord Jesus Christ and the mystery of God. On the 8th of December last year, Pope Francis issued an apostolic letter called the, With the Father's Heart, in which he call, recalls the 150th anniversary of the, de the declaration of St. Joseph as a patron of the Universal Church, the Catholic Church, the Church that lives 2,000 years. To mark the occasion of this apostolic letter, Pope Francis proclaimed a year of St. Joseph. From December the 8th, 2020, to December the 8th, 2021. Today, in this archdiocese of Juba, we will begin to dedicate ourselves, our diocese, our parishes, our centers, and ourselves to St. Joseph, beginning from the 19th day of March 2021 to the 19th of March 2022. As to mark the journey of the dedication of the of the church, the local church, the Archdiocese of Juba, to Saint Joseph, all of us together will have this journey in the Archdiocese. As the apostolic letter of Pope Francis describes Saint Joseph in a number of a very striking ways, he says that Saint Joseph was a loving father. A loving father. What does it mean to be the loving father? A loving mother, a loving priest, a lovely man here at home. What does it mean? It entails that Saint Joseph was dedicated in his life. He loved Mary and he loved Jesus. 
He gave his life for all the two persons, plus the mystery of God in these two persons. Saint Joseph also is described as a tenderly and a loving father again, very kind, tender. The womb, we say the child is held in the womb in a very tender way. He was taking care delicately, like the mother takes care of her infant in the womb. Saint Joseph was taking care of Mary and Jesus in a very tender way. The letter of the Pope also says Saint Joseph was an obedient man, an obedient father. Saint Joseph was not someone who say no. Remember in the Bible or in the New Testament he was commanded four times by the angel of God. The first one was he was told to go to Egypt because Herod would like to kill the child. Saint Joseph after getting up from the dreams he got up in the middle of the night and he left for Egypt. That is what we hear from the scriptures. He left because he was obedient to the voice and the, and the voice of God. He never hesitated. He never said, how can I go? There are no means between Egypt and Israel. He, he got up early in the, morning, early in, in the middle of the night and he left because he was obedient father. He was also accepting father, a man who accepted the conditions of life. He accepted his own condition of life. This was a very humiliated man. Remember, if, for example, you are with your wife and you got your wife pregnant, and you are told by the angel of God, this child is from another man. Would you really, especially for you, man, would you really? So you are, in, 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 but this was a man who says, yes, okay, I accept this condition. My wife is found with a child. This is a child, a sacred child. Every child is sacred, like Jesus Christ. He knew that life is sacred. He would not disturb this child. He would not disturb the mother of this child to go away from his house. He has to accept the command of God, saying to him, take this child and his mother. The child, it does not belong to anybody. It does not belong to any man. It belongs to the Holy Spirit. Maybe the Holy Spirit softened his heart in order to accept all this humiliation for a man. For a man of this time, this is a humiliation when your wife is found with a child, a child from another person. Live alone from the Holy Spirit. You will be furious. And the woman will be like a small rat running for its own life. But here, St. Joseph has to accept in a very ordinary way, he has to accept what happens. Pope Francis also say, this father who is creatively courageous, he was creatively courageous. In what sense? In the sense that St. Joseph, after all knowing what is spoken about Jesus Christ? He has to reinvent his role to be a foster father only for this child. He reinvented, he creatively reinvented his role as a father. In spite of all what he knows, every time he is challenged, he reinvent, he recreate 
how to survive with the mystery of God. So Saint Joseph was not an ordinary, an ordinary man in a sense that he was really a man intended to keep the word of God, to keep God. Remember to take care of God. If all of us here would care for God, what would happen to our world? There would be a transformation. But here is a man like Joseph who was ready to be creatively alive with all the roles, with all the challenges that he has from everybody, from all land, from Simeon, he has to bear it with the creativity to survive the stress, the pressure that could happen to this man. He bared it. He was not only creatively courageous, but he was also a walking man. A man who walks every day, a carpenter. He does not claim to have only a, a, a white collar job. He would walk in his carpentry in order to produce more, in order to sustain Jesus and Mary. How many of us have that challenge to take care of our families? Especially for you men and young men, old men and young men. How many of us have that courage of St. Joseph to walk, to look for a walk? Some of us would like to sleep and say, I got already a, a degree from Juba University or Catholic University or from the College of St. Mary's. I have already a, a degree. I sleep and the work will get me on my bed. Joseph has never been like that. He has not sought of that kind of laziness. He got up and began to work. He was a carpenter by nature, and he taught God how to be a carpenter. You, you see, he taught God to be a carpenter, a good one. And that is how Joseph was so helpful to this mystery of God that was in his hand. We know also that Joseph was a father in a very shadowy way, a very shadowy way, shadowy way. It means that you claim to be, this is your son, but at the end of the day, this is not your son. It is the son of somebody else. It is the son of God in this case. Imagine if we could adopt children and live with those children as if this child was my own, as if this child was yours. What does it mean for a man to accept a child to be his own when he is not by blood your own? This is to live a shadowy fatherhood. And this shadowy, shadowy fatherhood was not difficult for St. Joseph to live. He lived it because he knew that we have only one father, as Jesus came and said later on in the Gospels. There is only one God. There is only one father. The rest of us are shadowy, shadowy fathers. Sometimes those who are philosophers would ask us whether you know your true father. If you say, yes, I know, you are, I, I know my true father, you are wrong. You are very wrong. Because you don't know your, who your father is. Maybe your mother, yes, it's true. That is a proof that your mother gave birth to you. Maybe some few women and men were around or uh, those who are uh, uh, involved in the hospital could understand that this child is really of this mother, of this woman. So my dear brothers and sisters, this Joseph who lives a, a shadowy fatherhood 
was so great in the eyes of God because he was living the true mission, the true will of God. It is important for us to remember this occasion, the launching of this occasion uh, with this pandemic, with this pandemic which has appeared to us last year and is still reappearing. To some of us, it is the second wave. To some other people in the world, it is the third wave. We know it is not ordinary. We have never been like this before. We are under stress. We have difficulties to sustain ourselves. It is because of this that we ask the intercession of Joseph. How did he manage to sustain Mary and Jesus? How did he manage to run to refuge with Jesus and Joseph? In the middle of the night, how did Jesus and Mary experience the love of this great man? In the hand of Joseph was this whole people of God. The whole people of God as a church, as we sit today in this church of St. Joseph, the patron of, the, of, of, of this house of God, we were not yet there when Joseph was taking Mary and Jesus together. We, it was our future that Joseph was taking care. So the man who goes unnoticed daily, he was unnoticed, he was hidden from the eyes of publicity he was hidden from the headlines. He was hidden from all important people of Judea and Israel and Egypt. This Joseph was hidden. He lived his life as a hidden person. But what he acquired in the salvation history is greater than any other man except Jesus and Mary. That's why the early fathers of the church say that Joseph is a patron of the universal church. Saint Joseph was not future in the, in the, in, in the public ministry of Jesus. Maybe that time when Jesus was beginning his public ministry, Joseph was already dead. That is why the Gospels are silent about his participation in the public man, in the public life of Jesus. But this man has already taught his son, and his son was already an adult, assuming independent of his mission, the mission of his father, to which he told in front of the intellectual in Jerusalem and philosophers in Jerusalem. He told Mary and Joseph, why are you looking for me? Don't you know that I have to be doing the business of my father here on earth? Why should you look for me? That was again a, a humiliation, a humiliation of Saint Joseph. He would have by that time left Mary and Joseph and go to his own retirement. But that man was not an ordinary man. He remained, he stick to Jesus because the will of God was there. He continued to be the father of Jesus. At that time when Jesus said those nonsense, it was not nonsense. But it was to tell him that there is only one father. The father who is God in heaven. He has to do the will of that father. And so the rest of us would swallow our fatherhood and accept 
that there is only one Father who is God. So we know that Joseph played his parenthood very well. And he educated Jesus very well. If Jesus, as a human person, had known a lot of good things, a moral life, good way of dealing with people, accepting all people of any sort, any kind, it was not for nothing. It was from Joseph. It was from Joseph that he learned this, all these values, the good values that make me, Jesus attractive to all everybody, including the elders like Nicodemus. My dear brothers and sisters, when Jesus said, my father, he was referring to God, not Joseph. It was a public declaration. I should take care of, I should take care of the affairs of my father. The father here is God. God the father for all of us, humanity. It was not Joseph. Joseph had learned to, to let things go. He accepted it. After all, Joseph knew God. The God of Abraham, the God of Joseph, the God of, of Isaac. Of course, the other Joseph, remember, sold by his brothers because of envy. We know there is no confusion here. We must understand the role of Joseph in the church. Joseph is a very perfect player of the role of a charity, a charitable man who is stand physically to protect Mary and Jesus, but who also is stand spiritually to protect the church. That's why one of the popes declared him as a universal protector of the church. It was for the great role of God that Joseph accepted all this. So there is something we can do as human beings. No one else can do. Only we, as individuals, we must play the game. We must play the, the role that Joseph played. We often call to be a Joseph, a figure of Joseph. And we can do that because one of us has done it, to take care of the mystery of God, to take care of Jesus. That means to listen to Jesus and do his will in, you, in yourself. This is a great role of this man. So with this phrase that we say, he is the guardian of the mystery of God. We describe the role of, God, of, of Joseph in the history of salvation. Pope St. John Paul II has left us with a sure point of a departure to be a guardian of the mystery of God. It is for us, all of us, to become a new creation to become people who, having been put together by the Holy Spirit, are now focused in the mystery, focused to the mystery of God. From the mystery made flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, the one who bids us to come after him, called to become faithful guardians of the mystery of God. Each one of us is called to protect this mystery. In making this consecration to St. Joseph, we are asking the Holy Spirit through the patronage of St. Joseph and in imitation to, of him to bring into relief the identity 
we have received at our baptism, reborn in order that we might permanently turn our gaze to the wonder at Mary's motherhood, to the infant who grew in wisdom and his strength, wisdom and his strength, he got some from Joseph. We must recommit ourselves to Jesus Christ because in him we have also gained wisdom and strength. Through his suffering, death, and resurrection, the world is redeemed. A love and a saleable definitely and forever proclaimed. Jesus, by his sacred person and flesh, has remade the family into a God-bearing place which holds the mystery of sonhood and a true spousal self-donation of lifelong chastity and fidelity to the will of God and the glory of his name. My dear brothers and sisters, when we, what we, we, what we mean by consecrating our diocese, our parishes, our centers, and above all, our families, to Joseph, we mean to imitate Saint Joseph in our life, in the families. The devil would like to attack our families first, and once our families are scattered, and he can catch the little ones, the children first, to be delinquents, to be negas, to be trontos, because the devil has already scattered the father and the mother. Maybe the mother is still hanging there, trying to control the children, but all the children are gone, because the devil knows very well that by attacking the family, he will get the rest of the people along. So my dear brothers and sisters, our consecration to the family, to the values of the family, must be above all the first thing. If we have a good priest, if we have a good bishop, if we have a good faithful, if we have a good doctor, if we have a good minister, if we have anybody who is good, it is not because he got his goodness in school, but he got his goodness in the family, where the father was faithful, where the mother was faithful, dedicating their own lives for their children. And that is where we can benefit, all of us, all of us, all of our institutions can benefit from a good family. And so, we must imitate Joseph, the faithful husband of our mother, the Virgin Mary. God will use this consecration to draw us to the different situations from which all mysteries, that is, you, will be understood anew in the mystery of God. He will draw you to embrace a new vision, a new identity in your family, a vision which will catch us together in the plan of God, that mystery of Christ, so that this new identity which we have been renewed by Joseph, by the intercession of Joseph, as a heavenly saint, it will help us. It will be now a renewed identity, like when we receive the resurrection of Christ. The hope which cannot be disappointing. If we do not yet understand that Jesus and his suffering, death and the resurrection is the new turning point for our history, the history of our life. For each, for each one of us, we in history, we must remember 
Each one of us has a role to play. Each one according to his degree of relationship to this mother church. Then we especially need this consecration. This consecration for each one of us during this year of St. Joseph, we must pray very hard so that the Lord make us like St. Joseph. We need the help of the one who, to whom God entrusted this mystery, Joseph himself, and to aid us and help us to remove the scales from our eyes, the sin from our eyes, those scales that block us from seeing the mystery of God. St. Jo Saint jo Saint Paul would say that still I am frustrated because I see, I do things that I do not intend, but God has given me his graces in order to overcome these scales that are in my eyes, that are blocking me from seeing the revelation of God. So I ask you to join me and all the diocese of Juba, the archdiocese of Juba, the parishes, the communities, our schools, our centers. I ask all of us to consecrate ourselves to Saint Joseph. Most particularly all men, all men, all men who have the charism of fatherhood, priests and parishioners alike, to walk this year with Saint Joseph, confident that with his help, we will be made by the Holy Spirit more apt guardians of the mystery of God. I urge you, fathers, young and old, to particularly pay attention to the challenges contained in this consecration, to see in them a challenge to our complacency, to begin to exercise a new, a new, the gift which becomes clearer to us as we meditate on the motherhood of Mary and the motherhood of our beloved spouses. Women play a great role. For every great man, it is commonly known there is always a great woman, except those who are priests. When the consecration of St. Joseph will uh, be accomplished on the 19th of March next year, I would like to see that our parishes, our diocese, our centers, our schools have a new image, a total a new image, that of dedication for others. Dedication for others. All of us have to dedicate ourselves for other, other people, like just St. Joseph did. He was a man for others. He was for Mary and Jesus. And may God bless us in this journey that we have come to begin, that the sort of going through this movement, going through this journey, all of us will be renewed and all our families will be renewed. Praise be Jesus Christ. Bajita Radio. Radio Bakitha. Sotel Kenisa. The voice of the church. <laughs>